Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be doing some lineup build stuff for uh, today's UFC card. And I want to share a an observation, um, observation, just kind of an interesting way of looking at content that I picked up from listening to, I'll shout it out, a podcast for, uh, well, the original guy who referred me to it was the sports projections guy who uh, I've had on here before. And I'd love to tell you his real name. I just don't know what it is. Um, but you, you're familiar with the content that he puts out on Twitter, I imagine. He has a, the website that that analyzes uniqueness and things like that. Real super sharp guy. Um, he he was on a podcast with, uh, forget the guys, I think that, so it's weird that we can talk about these guys in this way, but I think G Pants 13 or something like that. It's a really, really sharp sports betting uh, website or, excuse me, podcast. And they, they were talking about the different content that they, they're putting up. And I never really thought of it this way. You know, what, one of them was saying, I forget which one, was that um, with respect to the content they're putting out, they, they don't really want to put out kind of that day-to-day -day content. In other words, kind of like the picks videos, so, so to speak, that are specifically tailored to each day's information. Um, they prefer to put up more evergreen type content, meaning that, that things that they're teaching or discussing that are kind of, uh, I don't say scalable, but are applicable to all slates and applicable to all things, you know, and all different days and different different i don't know I, i'm really not saying it the right way but it got me thinking about the videos that i put up and i've been saying this for years now really but specifically in the last year i really want to put up content videos that that both apply to the slate at hand but mm -hmm. also can be used as a guideline for how to deal with other slates and I think that there's a, a there's an interesting gap in the content space with that in mind. And it's difficult. I know you guys are here because I'm saying it's probably a couple hours till lock and you want to know who to play and how to play and whatever. I get it. And other people might want to kind of learn how lineup building works and they might be coming here for that also. Um, but I think that it, the way I'm approaching this is is using an actual slate to describe well or to 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 talk about concepts that are applicable to others and uh we'll we'll see how that goes and a lot of this is going to be free form i don't know exactly where i'm going to go with this i do have some thoughts that are particular to this slate and we're gonna we're gonna build as well you, you see that i have saber sim up here right now and this is going to be our main construct for or constructor, I guess, uh, for how we're building lineups. And as as we build these, I'm, I'm going to put 150 lineups. We're going to build 5,000 lineups here. We're setting on the sim uh, setting. We're also set it for 150 max because that's what we're going to build for. And as this is going, I want to talk about some stuff. First of all, it's really important to know, to remember what projections mean in MMA. And one of the guys that's been following me on True DFS for a while, who's now doing his own videos, and that that actually makes me really, really happy. He's learning quite a bit, and and he's talking through it himself. Um, he brought this up in my Discord as well, and it, it's a it's a it's a point that that most sharp people know, but it sort of goes unnoticed for a while. Is the concept of projections with respect to MMA. Um, whether whether you are uh, doing it by a me, median or mean projections, and I don't want to get into the difference between the two of those, remember that it's almost never the case that the fighter is going to get this exact project, projection. It's not like NBA. Like NBA... You could argue that a player's median projection is very close to his mode. Mode being that that projection which actually shows up, you know what I mean, the most number of times. But in MMA, the way it works, you know, you have one fighter fighting another, it's almost impossible, not impossible, but, but it's very unlikely 
that the winning fighter or for the losing fighter for that matter reaches his or her exact median or mean projection for that matter. And when you are, because look at it, I mean, Molly McCann, when she really going to win and get 76? No, if she wins, she's probably going to get 90. And if she loses, she's going to get like 30 or something like that. But she's more likely to win. So that's how the median comes up, comes up to this, you know? And, and, and Ben Bagrimba, how often is he going to actually get 75? Like very, very rarely, you know, where, you know, uh, but, but, but these, this is correct. These are the median projections, but what happens is, is when you optimize and build lineups based on median projections, you're getting, okay. So on the one hand, everything's being judged the same. So you, you can say, well, uh, even though none of these guys are actually in these projections, you're still comparing one to the other. So it's still a good way to optimize, but when when you're trying to win GPPs and you're and you're going for upside, you really shouldn't be, if you think about it, uh, focused on this median projection. Okay, now there there are some sites. There's other ways to do this. Like if if you wanted to, okay, you could instead of putting a median projection in here, you could put and there there when boy how do I say this? I'm getting too tongue tied. The esports community, there are very few people that do uh, projections in esports, but the real sharp ones, they separate the projections based on how teams do in a win or how players do in a win versus how they do in a loss and never even get into the median, okay? Um, because it's not going to matter. And there, it's been argued that MMA projections should be that way too. You know, you, you should just you know, put in what a fighter rates to win when they win. Because we don't care about what they happens when they lose either. And then what you have to do is, and then what happens is instead of just multiplying that by the percent chance that they do win, you have to just kind of input those kind of separately. Like sometimes it gets 110, sometimes 30, sometimes 120, sometimes 40, you know, instead of reducing it to this median, one median projection. Like for example, you know, you have this, like why would you imagine that Molly McCann is projected better than Thamba Garimbo, right? Thamba Garimbo has a better inside the distance prop by a lot, okay, by a ton. His inside the distance prop is minus one 115, and Molly McCann's is plus 220, you know? Um, and he's got takedown upside. So why on earth would Molly McCann's median projection be higher? Because Molly McCann is just that much more likely to win. So, so what you're doing here is you're multiplying the chances that you have to win by some of these outcomes. And that's why you're getting a median projection higher in some places. Like Saberson has Denver Grimble higher, but, but I'm trying to il illustrate a point here. Okay. Um, so when you're when you're dealing with projections, it's really important to know that that. When you're just optimizing based on the median, you, you, you're missing something. Okay. Now, fortunately, the way we do it with SaberSim allegedly accounts for that. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're building five thousand lineups, and when we rank them, you rate them by certain metrics. Okay. You you don't want to rate them just by projection. Okay. Um, because now first oh, okay because again then you're just you know calculating based on median but when you rate them based on say saber score or something else which which provides for a little more upside and a little more of that you know 95th 99th percentile outcome uh you you're 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 doing a little bit better when you're when you're figuring out gpps now the other thing uh that I want to get into is the difference between contest sims and game sims because people with with the advent of all the contest sims out there people have been you know uh using these terms interchangeably but they're they're different okay what contest sims are is when you take a oh a a a uh a portfolio of lineups that you have and you compare it to what you think the field is going to play, 
okay? And you simulate how your lineups do against that field, the lineups of the fields, okay? And that's what a contest sim is. And, and that is where, and then you figure out, you know, you figure out, the algorithm figures out what your ROI is given what everybody else is playing, okay? Um, and that's become like the nomenclature through the industry is, is what, you know, what do the sims say, okay? But game sims are different. You know, what, 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 you, what you're doing when you're simulating the game is doing something better than just uh, median projections. So, like with Saber Sim, allegedly, I say allegedly because I don't, I don't see what's going on in the background, so I have to say allegedly. Like what they do is they don't just um, uh, what you call it. They don't just calculate a median projection. They simulate the fights, or like within baseball and basketball, they actually simulate the games. So that you don't just plot out, you know, the median, the median, the median, the median. You're actually getting numbers that a fighter could could score. So that's why when you'll see sometimes with Saber Sim, which is a little bit better, honestly, than than just median projections, is you'll see stuff like uh Garimbo would be higher than McCann. Okay, because even though even though McCann's going to score more, those times that Garimba wins, he just scores you know a great amount, and and it kind of factors that in. So it's important to know what you're dealing with. You're dealing with sims, whether it be whether you're dealing with the with the fight sims or the, just the contest sims. Now they're both very important, but it also leads me to this question of when you aggregate and when you figure out which one you want, is it okay? to uh to mix apples with oranges you know like if you're going to mix a a contest sim excuse me a game sim based results with a median projection result is that kind of you know like i said mixing apples and oranges is that affecting your your process in some way and the answer is yes okay um does that mean it's not better than nothing no it's definitely better than not not doing this but it's 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 just important to know what you're assuming when you put these projections. In. Okay. Um, okay. So what we've done is we have just run 150 lines, and that's what I like to do from the beginning. And I'm using you know these projections first, um, and then we're looking at how these five thousand are being ranked now. It's this is where your your bread is buttered. Okay, this is this well, this is part of where your bread is buttered, right? This is this is where you're separating yourself from everybody else when it comes to construction versus just figuring out who the best plays are. You know, like if if uh, um uh. I was gonna say, um, I, I I literally got distracted for a second. Anyway, so we're ranking these by in a certain way, okay? And let's go through like the various ways you could rank these. Right, the first thing you just rate is by projected score, and this is literally the worst thing you could do. Right, this is just just by median projection, okay? Not uh, well, I shouldn't say that because. When you are rating by projected score, rem remember that the Saber Sim part of this is already factoring in that a little bit of upside. So it's not that bad, but because the rest of the projection is not, then this is probably not, not a great idea. Okay. Um, the, the next thing that you want to look at is this under Saber score, this Sim Diversity 10. Okay. And what this does, okay. By the way, is this this one even change that much? Let me just see something. Let's go, let's go, let's let's rank these by exposures for a minute. So let's let's just go back. I just want to see how these things kind of screw around. So if we rate these things by projected score, you're getting Imovov 69%, and then Stoyarenko, then Belbita, actually, because this is what happens. Like they they, you know, uh they're giving a median projection of Belbita of 54, even though she's never actually getting 54. 
right? How is she possibly ever getting 54? So she's showing up in a lot of projected score lineups like that. Now, when you go to Sim Diversity 10, okay, now you'll see things are a little bit different. Like, let's look at the person we just mentioned, for but for example, um, where is Belbita? So Belbita already went down to, what's this exposure here? 26% just because we re-ranked them by sim diversity 10. So what sim diversity 10 is, okay, we click through the, the, the eyeglass there, and that is sim optimals, okay? So this is when they, 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 they simmed all the fights, and these are the optimal lineups, and then they add 0.8 times the sum of the projection, which is fine, and then minus uh, the average owner, okay? So it is definitely taken into account to some degree ownership. And this is a pretty, this is a pretty aggressive way uh, to come up with, with what could be the optimal lineup. Okay. Um, and quite honestly, this is not bad, like at all. You know, even if you're playing the 150, you could just literally just put this stuff in there. And you could be off to the races with a really, really good set of lineups. The only thing that I would say is that when you, uh, if you're on a smaller card, like 10 or 11 fights, you have to do a lot more because it's not enough to get, it's kind of sick, right? But what I'm about to say, but it's, it's not enough to get the optimum, right? When you're doing this analysis. Oftentimes, the optimal is going to be duped by a lot of players. And if it's if, if it's duped too many times, you just don't even want it. You, know, you just don't even want it. So, so you have to make sure in some way that the dupes are, are limited. Okay? Um, now... In a 13 fight car, it's a little less important, but it's still somewhat important. So how, how do you handle this? Like, how do you possibly measure how duped a lineup is? It's really, really hard. I, I'll say that. It's extremely difficult. Um, but one way that you can kind of at least manage this is by do geo mean filtering. Uh, another way is by taking, you know, intentionally leaving money on, on the table or something like that. But the first thing I want to scan for is this geo mean stuff. So let's let's pull this up. And this is our spreadsheet where where we can at least guesstimate, you know, how many uh, dupes are going to be in how many. Uh, dupes a lineup is going to have given its ownership. Um, and there's uh, some flaws with this too, which we'll get to in a minute, but let's take a look for a second. So in this MME contest that we're talking about, there's 22,875 people. So we put this in 22,875. And this this spreadsheet is actually going up to the on the site soon. And if you want to get completely unique, your geo mean meaning your you know basically it's product ownership whatever is is going to be about 0.187 now this is not 100% guaranteed but it's at least a guideline um like you'll see for example that some of these lineups at the even at the top of the list here have geo means of 25 26 25.7 this one 21.79 that's pretty freaking good you know um, but to like show you what that means, like if we put in, say, we can back into this. If you think that if, if they, if a lineup rates to be duped about 10 times, then you're talking about a geo mean of 27. So it's actually not that bad. Okay. You know, how bad is it? to have a lot of do 10 times. I mean, it's 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 not great, 
but it's not terrible. But just to kind of see what it would look like, okay? If you want to, min to have a maximum dupes of five, then you want geo mean of 24.5. So what you could do is filter down here, add filter, and then show geo mean of less than uh, 24.5, for example. Or let's say, just, yeah, 24.5. And then we save this filter. And it just re-rated all these guys. Okay. Um, and what's what's interesting again is that like some of these are really, really strong. Like this one here at 21, that means that one is possible to have like oh maybe one or two dupes or something like that. Um however, I mean, I, as you'll see, I mean, when you go through this, even scrolling. I mean, you're you're right on the border, you know. Like you're 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 right around five dupes. Five dupes is pretty reasonable. I mean, honestly, like to give you an example, like if I were going to go for the throat and go, you know, min uh, eighteen point seven, so I want nothing to be duped. I mean, this is I'll, I'll show you what we're dealing with here. So, like for for example, uh, when we have it at um twenty four point five. Geo mean, the last line up there, it projects at 37, 378 projected points, 380, something like that. Let's uh, change this filter to, to 18.7 because that's what we need to have like, well, that's what we can predict is going to have no dupes. So you'll see you can't even get 150 lineups of the 5,000 if you're scanning by geo mean in one dupe. And the ones that you do get, I mean, you go down here, I mean, you're projected score by 320. You know what I mean? So it's this constant balance between how much you want to you want you want to risk, you know, like. You could, yeah, listen, I can find you 150 lineups probably that rate to be, be unique, but, you know, they don't look all that great. So I think that it's probably responsible <laughs> in a way to um, to do geo mean at 24.5, as I was saying. Five, you know, what is that, five dupes? That was, what did I say? That was 10, right? No, it's actually five dupes. So five dupes, 24.5. I think it's pretty reasonable. And, you know, you could, you know, do kind of a spot check and see, you know, these, you know, if you, if you like any of these guys. But you probably shouldn't worry too much about that. I mean, honestly. Um, and you are getting, listen, you have to be, I guess you have to be comfortable with 25% Diana Belbita, I suppose. And, you know, only 11% Kiziev. And unfortunately, when it comes to doing this, this 150 playing, you, you unfortunately can't really worry about who you have, okay? Um, if you're just focusing on lineup building, you have to presume that what you did at the beginning um, was worth something, okay? Um, so speaking of which, I want to save these Let's say some of them at least. I want to say 50 of them to my, whatchamacallit, to my uh, lineups. Just take a quick look and see what they look like here. That's fair enough. Um, we're going to save these down to the CSV. We're going we're gonna to call them 50, you know, geo mean. So let's save these, file, save as, recents, and then we'll go MMA, geo mean, um, geo mean uh, 24.5. Well, it's, I don't know if it's one of these. Okay. And then we'll put, uh, we'll do 50. So we know, we, we know that we have 50. Okay. Okay, next thing, we'll take out the filter. And then we're going to re-rate these, all these lineups. We'll go back to 150. 
by the next thing that we want to talk about, and this is MMA defaults. All right, so MMA defaults is Sabre Sims' version of complete lunacy. And I say that lovingly, right? It is rating your 5,000 lineups in a way that is extremely aggressive. And, and to get into the weeds, right? It's funny the way they call it defaults because um, nobody actually plays this way. But we'll click through on the eyeglass and you'll see what it is. The formula is 0.5 times the sum of the projections plus, ready for this? 0.5 times the percentile, the 99th percentile of lineups. And then plus, um, and then 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 you actually you you uh plus actually so you're to you're you're subtracting 0.3 times the sum of adjusted ownership. So you're also digging it, digging it for ownership. So you're playing nothing but ceiling and you're digging it for ownership. This is just about as aggressive as you can come. And if you know anything about MMA, you'll see why. I mean, this is like really, really gross. Okay. But you start looking at these geo means, and these are all, not all of them, but a good amount of them rate to be extremely low duped. So if you want to just, again, taking this from a portfolio management perspective, right? You play 50 according to say, and again, this is just things that I kind of screw around with. 50 according to uh, Sim Diversity 10, that has already been filtered a little bit by GeoMean. And then you play, say, 50 of these. Okay. Then I think you're you're, you're developing kind of this portfolio of lineups. Um, so let's let's save these. We're going to call these uh, MMA default. MMA, and then uh, 50 MMA default. Okay. So we did 50 of the Sim Diversity 10. And I think that's sometimes you do 150 like that, depends on the slate, right? Sometimes you do 150 MMA default, whatever it is. But remember, we're doing this specifically for the 150 max, you know? So what are we going to do with the other 50? Now, you could, you, could, you could do whatever you want. But I think what is healthy is to incorporate your takes a little bit in the 150, yeah, in, in the last 50. And this is what what I would recommend doing. So this is, let's take my takes from this uh, card. So as you might remember, my takes from this card were that, um, okay, there, there were several key fights. There was the uh, uh, Garimbo, Pete Rodriguez fight. I thought that whoever won that fight would be optimal. Most likely, actually, more to, so more to the point, Pete Rodriguez, actually. And then, the Moicano Dober fight and Dober is probably where you get the leverage there. And then I also thought the uh, Urbina Radke fight. Uh, and then I also uh, liked a little bit of the, uh, whatchamacallit, of, uh, of, of Stoliarenko, but I thought she was going to be too popular. I think I wanted to fade that, that Kizia fight, fight or whatever. And the main event is just kind of okay. So what I want to do is kind of create rules for those and then filter by either by GeoMean or by Sal. So I'll, this is what we're going to do. So let's build some groups. Uh, lineup rules and whatever your rules are. I mean, I think this is very, very healthy. So add new rule. Let's do a group. We will, uh, so let's first do, and I also like, by the way, uh, what's his name? Peterson at the bottom. So let's do Rodriguez and Garimba, right? We're going to do at least one, we're going to do exactly one primary, exactly one, and we're going to call this uh, Rodriguez, Garimba, let's call it that. Garimba will save this rule. 
Then we're going to go uh, rad key. We'll do another one. Uh, add new rule. Let's do the uh, the easy one first. We'll do uh, Moicano. Moicano and what's his name? Uh, Dober. Where is he? Dober. We're going to go exactly one primary player. We'll call it Dober. Moik, we'll put him in. And we didn't necessarily have to lock this one in. Um, oh, and Radke Urbina, right? So we'll do one more. Add new rule. Group Urbina Radke. And we're going to exactly one primary player. We'll call it Herb Rad, right? Save that one. And then what we talked about is we wanted to, what other takes did I have? Well, I wanted to fade both the, 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 the female fighters. So we were going to take them out. So no McCann. We were going to take no... Uh, uh Silva, right? Hold on. Where was Silva? Where is it? Um where is she? Uh Silva. I'm not gonna show up too much anyway. But we'll take Silva out. And that was pretty much all my rules, right? I wanted to keep those key fights. Wanted to fade those two. And the rest I kind of would live with. That was that was the idea. Now, the one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we get good representation from these uh from these others. So we're gonna put Rodriguez 50% max uh minimum. We'll put in uh what's his name? Radke. Well. What we're going to actually put them in with respect to, um, sorry, with uh, what their chance of winning are. So we're going to put Rodriguez 30 or so, Radke 30, uh, Jober is a little bit better. So we'll put 35% or so. And let's, we'll make sure that we get, we're going to do the exact. Uh, uh, exposure here. So Moicano will do 65. Dober 35. Rodriguez 30. Garimbo 70, right? Um, where's Garimbo? Where is Mr. Garimbo? Garimbo 70. Uh, Radke would be like 35 and Urbina 65. I would call 60 40. No, 65 for Urbina and 35 for. Uh, where'd he go? 35 for Radke. So we do those key fights and we're going to build, I think we already have them, right? That's pretty funny, actually. We already have them based on Sim Diversity 10. So we have, I think so. Let's, let's just rebuild these for the hell of it. Um, let's just make sure. We have we have Dober 34, Meikano 66, Garimbo 72. Um, where's John's? Uh, Rodriguez 24. Want to get him to 30, though. So let's start over. I mean, why not? Let's uh rebuild these. You don't need to build, build 5,000 though for this for this purpose. We'll just we'll just do a thousand. And this shouldn't be that hard. So what we're doing is we're we're, we're doing our, our our leans like our our actual you know who we like sort of and then filter those out by maybe we'll do some by salary and some by uh
and then we'll do some by uh, by geo mean. And we're not going to pause this. And these are just like some ideas about how to build, you know, because um, you, you do want your takes to be incorporated. And again, this is when, when I said I want key fights, that also is it speaks to the idea that I don't really care too much about the mean projection is that I think one, whoever wins is going to score well. I think the other thing I want to do is I think I want to take out the fighters that I hated you know, like Carolina or whatever, but I, I, let's just see what we get. Let's just see what we get here. So we'd be fading Silva, fading McCann, those two key fights. See what we get. And then what we might want to do is we might want to boost the other guys that we liked, like the um, Peterson. You know, we liked him a lot. Maybe that's just one kind of manual adjustment we'll make. And then, then we'll then resort by whatchamacallit. By either geo mean or by salary. I think geo, I think salary is probably a good way to do it this time because I legitimately think that those 86, 87 hour fighters are going to outscore the 93s like a decent amount of the time. So I think that 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 doing salary makes a lot of sense. So why don't we do this? Why don't we do 25 lineups sorted by salary? And 25, we'll just do with, with geo, okay? Unable to meet exposure, so that's not bad. Well, to be okay. Garimbo, Rahano, Radke, get a decent amount of Randy Brown there. So I want to get a little more of the uh, of Peterson. So I wonder if we can't do that by just, just jamming, say, 50% of him in this build. Oh, we could do that. It's pretty easy, actually. Um, and this is rated by MMA default, which we could certainly do, you know? Uh, so we're getting the guys that we want. Uh, unfortunately, we are getting a good amount of Diana Belbita in this. Uh, in this. But we're only going to do, say, 25. 25 lineups. And then you get to see Arujo, Carolina. This is actually not a bad idea. So let's do that. Garimba, Moicano, Urbina, Dober, Radke. We're, okay, so we're getting all the key fights. We're fading the two women, and we're good. So let's save these. So we're sorting these by MMA default. So these are the guys that we like, but we're going for just max upside. So we will download these. And this will be this one... Thing that we're going to do that's going to be a little different. Oh, wait, that's not what I want. I want this, the lineups. Okay. Now the projections. So this is going to be, we're going to call this um, uh, 25, 25 uh, takes. That's my takes. And then we're going to do, um, you know, MMA defaults. Okay, good. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do 25 lineups that just intentionally leave money on the table. So that's going to be 
Um, we'll do max 49,000. Well, we shouldn't need to do that. We don't really need to do that because like the, the highest price fighter is, is Silva. She's 9,500. I'm not worried about the $8,400 fighter. I guess so. So I don't we didn't do a thousand, but we could do eight hundred. Because I do think that Moicano or eighty four hundred could outscore. So yeah, so maybe, so maybe we'll use a like we'll, we'll put eleven hundred on the table for this one. Sorry, so twenty five lineups. We're gonna leave forty eight thousand nine hundred on the. We're gonna leave eleven hundred on the table. We're not gonna have any whatever we're not we don't have to build that many right for this i don't think let's just make sure for the purposes of this that we don't use two in the same lineup because it's possible they might make us do that with this particular build so let's build this and let's see what we come up with Unable to meet exposure. We have 25. We're getting all the guys we want. We're leaving the money on the table. Still getting this freaking Del, Del, Del Bita play. So, you know, I don't like Del Bita. Let's get rid of her. How about that? We don't like Arujo either. Let's get rid of her. Beautiful. So now we're going to get some Solly Cough instead. Charles Johnson, like all this stuff. What would happen if we got rid of Solly Cough too, by the way? And Caroline. And we're really just getting the people that we liked. All right. So this is actually pretty good. So we're getting, and where is, what's the worst? Peterson's up there, right? So we're getting all the guys that we want. We're leaving money on the table. I think this has got a shot. So let's um, download these. And we're gonna call these takes salary. MMA takes salary. Now, there's one more thing that we have to do. And for those of you that didn't follow along, um, well, one thing that we have to do, by the way, is we also have to make sure we get our lineups in for the LEC slate. We'll do that kind of on the side. But... Now what we have to do is we have to take all these lines that, that we created and make sure that we haven't duped ourselves, right? Because we did, um, what was I going to say? We did several different screens here, and it's possible that some of these lineups would appear in all the screens, you know? So we have to make sure that we're not duping ourselves here. First of all, let me just run these lineups real quick. Uh, you know, it's pure transparency. I'll show you what I'm doing right now. We're gonna we're gonna run. Uh, sorry, just what are we doing right now? We're running our LEC builds. All right. So what we have to do is we have to get all these lineups that we just created, and we have to make sure that they're not duped. So we have a little tool that will help us do that. You could have DraftKings does an okay job of that. Uh, if, as long as there was nothing in there before, but there was. So we're going to get all these lineups that we started with. So we're going to start with the Geo Mean, these 50, right? We're going to add the 25 for the take salary.
Okay, Andy's going to take salary. So the geo mean, take salary, and then uh, the 25 MMA default takes MMA default. Okay. Okay. Default. And then we're going to go um, the uh, 50 MMA default. Fifty MMA default. And now we have 150 lineups, but let's just see if they're all unique. Now I have this little tool that will let me do that. And I will put this on the site eventually, but I'm just kind of flexing it right now. Hopefully it works. Uh, Dupe test. I'm going to put these 150 into this thing right here. Boom. Make sure we don't too many here. And then we're going to click this macro, which removes duplicate lineups. See how many we're left with. And it'd be cool if there were no dupes at all. Yep. All unique. Sick. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these 150. Boom. Pull in the the editor, the editor entry, whatever. Actually, we didn't enter them all yet. So we just have to save these. All right. So let's uh Let's, uh, okay, so these are the 150 we're going to use, right? I need an enter them. Okay, so what we're going to save these as its own file. Cool. Here, we'll do this. This is going to be maybe right? the, the 150 that we play. MMA, MMA, MME, 150. And then once I, you know, enter, this is what I'm going to use. So that's a lot. It's a lot to consider. Um, one thing I didn't do at all was, was contest sims for the purposes of this one. Um, and sometimes I do the contest sims, sometimes I don't. Kind of happy with my process without using them in this particular case. So that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.